Jalen Rose on Jalen and Jacoby yesterday saying that 10K is a bargain for DeAndre and a real steal, Stephen A. Do you agree with him? Do I agree with Jalen? Yes, do you agree with Jalen that it's a bargain? Um, no, I don't. Um, I don't agree with Jalen. I don't agree with Jalen on, on several fronts. I do agree with him in terms of what he said about what coaches get compensated for and how players should be compensated. But I, all, I don't agree with him when he talks about it's a bargain. First of all, DeAndre averaged 20 and 11 in college. I get that. I'm more fixated on the fact that that $10,000 per month, assuming it is true, paid for a first-round exit to Buffalo where some dude named Wes Clark and Jeremy Harris gave it to Arizona, uh, you know, in the NCAA tournament. I'm more interested in the fact, and I think this is the part that Jalen missed in my, res in my respectful opinion, because I totally get where Jalen's coming from. But where I think he missed it is when we hear that DeAndre Ayton Max got paid $10,000 a month. If you had heard his family got paid. If you had heard that a mortgage was being paid or that somebody in need was receiving this level of compensation, that would be different. But when you're talking about DeAndre Ayton himself getting paid this amount of money, where money is being funneled directly to a kid in that amount, You've got yourself a problem because that's why the FBI has been involved. That's why the NCAA, regardless of what they try to act like, don't mind the federal authorities getting involved to help police their respective sports and what have you. The hammer is going to be brought down more heavily than ever before because if you're talking about an individual <laughs> player getting paid that amount of money where he's getting the money pocketed himself and that's what's being publicized, then you're talking about the potential there for point shaving and things of that nature, the integrity of sports being compromised. And I think it's more flagrant when the details of this come out in that fashion, and that's what I think people are missing. This is right. not a debate as to whether or not the athlete should be paid, because I'm in total support of that, that they should be compensated and what have you. But the individual player receiving the money and that being publicized, that opens up a can of worms none of us want open. And I think that's what people are missing. I'll address that in a second. First, I agree with Jalen. $10,000 a month, that's, not, that's like not only three quarters max the contract. Like $10,000 a month for DeAndre, that's a deal. That's $100,000, that's $120,000, $15,000 a month is more like it, Stephen A. That's one hundred eighty. dollars That was, to my understanding, what the going rate's been for a while. They got a deal on that. DeAndre Ayton. I want to know who their capologist is and whether they have any room for some mid-level exception high school recruits. I couldn't care less if the rules are broken in high school or college players are getting paid. I understand it's against the rules. The FBI may care. The NCAA may care. But the hypocrisy is so, hypocrisy is so overwhelming and hilarious, I really couldn't care less. The assumption by most is a lot of these kids are getting paid. Stephen A., you and I and others have heard stories for years and know things for years about, or, or believe we do, about people taking money and my point and, and like who cares and people are showing you they don't care the NCAA decided to point a camera at amateurism and there's a big appetite for it so everyone's getting paid including the NCAA except the student athletes St or st the athletes Stephen A when you say there's the potential for point shaving no not necessarily well, I don't understand that if a school is paying the kid under the table, they're paying him to play for them. If you're saying the idea that a kid would take money, period, opens up a can of worms, then that can is open because we know a lot of these kids are taking money. So the question then becomes, why would the school giving them the money lead to point shaving? I, I, I don't see how. The school wants that kid to play well for them. Not to, not to shave points to beat the odds. If we found out a gambler was giving kids money, that would be very serious. Something like that. And even then, you know what the argument is there for, Stephen A? It's there to, the real argument is, when you don't pay the kids money and exploit their labor, the situation is ripe to be exploited. If the kids are making money for their labor, they're over 18 years old, they're playing essentially a professional sport, let's be honest, then it's harder to well, point shave and do all kinds of stuff like that. Listen, I, I don't want you to focus. Maybe I shouldn't have said the point shaving because I, that wasn't really my point. I was using that as an example as a residual impact. But I'm just saying, Max, Max, there's a difference. And first of all, I, I, me personally, I'm not knocking you for it, but me personally, I'm not going to go on the air with a bunch of kids watching 
and say that it's all right to break rules. I'm just not going to do that because, to me, that's leading them down a dead-end path. We know they should be paid. We know they should be compensated. We know that coaches and programs are getting a boatload of money. I get that. Time out, Stephen A., who's breaking the rules? Not the kids. The, the schools no, no, are breaking no, the rules. Well, what, what, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the bottom line is we can't sit up there and say, I don't give a damn about the rules. That's all I meant by that statement. Mm. We can't. I don't think that's the responsible position to take. That's number one. But number two, and more importantly, again, if I'm poor and I'm starving and the public finds out that money was funneled to me or to my family because we're in a desolate situation and we see these programs and NCAA programs with a bunch of money, all right, let us get some of it because the coaches and programs get some of that money. That's an entirely different argument than a kid directly receiving cash payments per month to come and play with a program from an optics perspective. It's just an entirely different look, and it's stomached differently. And I think that's something that we have to pay attention to. DeAndre Ayton being paid $10,000 a month, allegedly, to play for a college program. When you look at it from that perspective, that is just not a good look compared to us finding out, all right, his family was taken care of. Well, he's not because right. As long as, in other words, the kids who's, who they're constantly told, no, you don't need the money, you don't need the money, let's generate money for everyone else. If we do find out they're taking money, as long as it's some kind of altruism involved, because they haven't given enough, other people haven't profited enough. So if they're getting the money, as long as it's really not them, who, they who are benefiting, it's someone in their family, it's someone else who's disadvantaged, then it's okay. God forbid they should want some money like everyone else. I do not blame the kids for taking it. I blame the schools I'm certainly for not blaming offering the kids it. For, but I'm not, I'm not blaming the kids for taking it. 